Let's talk about Mortiana from the 1991 classic that is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Now, if you don't know much about Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, let me give you a really quick overview to set the scene. The film follows a guy called Robin Hood, who eventually becomes a Prince of Thieves. See? Quick overview. Man of my word. So let's get into the nightmare fuel. Mortiana. And oh my word, did this woman scare me when I was a young whippersnapper back in the mid-90s. Anyone comment on my age and I'm going to fucking lose her. I must have seen this film at least 25 times, and I've never been able to deal with her. Just to set the scene here, and because I'm not actually really a man of my word, Prince of Thieves is based on a 12th century ballad Robin Hood, a heroic, green outfit wearing, merry men befriending, Maid Marian finger blasting outlaw who's skilled with both sword and bow. Having found his land taken off him by the bastard sheriff, he goes on this robbing spree, stealing from the rich and providing for the poor, giving us a good old fun tale of outlaw versus tyrannical leadership. Hurrah! In Prince of Thieves, we follow the old tale pretty closely. Our Hood, played by Kevin Costner, is in Jerusalem at the time of the Third Crusade, 1190 AD. This was led by King Richard I, or Richard the Lionheart, as you might actually know him. Robin of Loxley and his band of the merriest men that you've ever seen are being held in a prison, but one of them has an intricate tattoo of the prison system on his back that helped... Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong show. Either way, though, they escape with their newfound Turkish friend, Azim, who I assume is a barber for all the followers forest folk, played by the well-known Turkish actor Morgan Freeman. They return to England, but Robbie finds out that his dad is dead and their castle Loxley has been smashed to pieces by none other than Severus Snape, also known as the Sheriff of Nottingham in this film. Robin and Azim flee to the forest to be met by Little John, who isn't little and probably isn't even called John to be fair. They have a little fight in the river and Robin eventually wins, meaning they all join forces together to create the Avengers if they existed before technology was actually invented. Of course, the Sheriff and Robin's gang have a few straighteners but Marion gets herself taken into the sheriff's castle where he intends to marry her. Robbie Rotten doesn't like this though so he aims to break up that party. Of course he does and he gets to bang Marion until his bow snaps enough. But it's amongst all of this drama that we meet Mortiana a mysterious witch who lives in the dungeon's chambers within Nottingham Castle. Her goal throughout the film is to have the sheriff become king of England, reproduce with Maid Marion because she has some royal bloodline. Robin wasn't the only blood in her. <laughs> Fuck you know. We find out later that Mortiana is actually the sheriff's mum, though he doesn't even know this himself for most of the film. This vested interest in his path to the throne would mean that she would gain power as she would become the king's mother, giving her more time to push her devil-worshipping agenda. Mortiana is often caught spying on her son from the darkness, through small cracks or hiding somehow. She creeps around weirdly, just watching silently, with her two weird little eyes, one that's brown and one that's this kind of white washed out colour. She has a glory Hole, sorry, peephole that she uses predominantly to spy on him. Even though she's an absolute freak, she does, in fairness to her, have motherly love outside of her hunger for power. When he gets shit-faced and calls her out for spying on him and always trying to manipulate him in some way, she calmly consoles him and explains that she is in fact his mother and just wants him to become king. But at the core of Mortiana, she's twisted and sadistic. At one point, she admits to stealing a baby and killing it just so her son would take its place to become the sheriff in the first place. But ignoring all of this, there's one bit that always freaks me out about her more than anything else. It's her concoctions that allow her to have visions which either answer questions for her or help her see into the future. But more specifically, it's how she makes these various substances that really used to send me in the wrong direction. Quite often, they would involve her blood and spit along with a combination of gross or obscure objects. We'd always see her in this, like, smoky, dark room with her long, disgusting fingernails cutting through the shadows. Quite often, she'd mix the concoctions with those fingernails and it was just gross. In one of these examples we see snakes and frogs freely roaming around her as she cracks an egg onto a silver platter. I say cracks but she actually uses those fingernails to slice the shell and then just pour out what I can only assume is blood and a dead chicken fetus onto the plate while she just groans like she's possessed. Bits of shell fall onto the plate and are just covered in this red fetus goo. I don't even know what it is, it's just fucking minging. She even drops some runes onto the plate and for those of you with eagle eyes you might have noticed that one of the runes has a skull and crossbones on it and two of the runes have Norse symbols, Uras and Kenaz on them which actually signify understanding and wisdom, vision, revelation and knowledge. There's just something about 
about her voice, her aura, her overall appearance. Even where she spends her time in this dark and disgusting room filled with junk. It just really messes with me. And for whatever reason, I just really struggle with Mortiana. And the constant close-ups on her face never really help to settle my nerves when she's about either. Look at her. Luckily for me and the rest of you too, she doesn't actually survive. Near the end of the film, when the forced marriage is taking place, Azim actually impales her with her own spear. And we just see her leg it off down the hallway with it hanging out of her. And the film gives us the assumption that she's run off to die like a wounded animal. She doesn't die. Look, she's back. Oh no, she's dead again. Impaled by Azim javelin in, javelin in some, javelin in javelin ing fucking hell impaled by Azim just fucking yeeting another weapon at her and sending her flying across the room for her somewhat instantaneous death this time around thank the fucking lord but what do you not reckon is she just some nice old lady that lives over the road in another castle or some absolute fucking wrong and that makes you feel uneasy whenever you see her too let me know in the comments below I've been Stuart with Unleashed the Ghouls and until next time good night and sweet nightmare fueled dreams